John Fetzer was a visionary, a pioneer, and an entrepreneur. He was a very successful businessman. He used his businesses to serve the public, but he also had a stronger, more authentic inner spiritual call. And he used that call then to see the John Fetzer Institute that served as a platform for others to join in this global transformation. Gandhi once said that there's plenty in this world to satisfy mankind's need, but not his greed. You won't find the words love and forgiveness in many boardrooms around the world, but there are many businesses from social entrepreneurs to major corporations who are exemplifying compassion and love and forgiveness. We hold these up for everyone to be able to learn from, and we ask for everyone in the business world to join this effort because it really is going to be the only way that our world will survive. For us at Novartis, our mission is to care and to cure. If there's an unmet medical need and we have a way to either cure or to treat that disease, we're going to do it. It's in the DNA of the company. Leprosy starts as a discolorated spot on your skin. People are afraid of of the disease because it has such drastic uh, results, physical results. It is a picture that raises fear. You see, people have clawed hands. There are a lot of people who have, do not have hands anymore, who do not, do not have feet anymore. It is uh, a scary picture. You have to look at it and you have to say, yes, this is a horrible disease, which is why we have to redouble our efforts and ensure that anybody that could potentially contract leprosy, we have to help them. But we have multiple drug therapy that all of a sudden the disease could be cured. And this gives us a special responsibility. So in 1985, we started the Leprosy Fund and the issue that was coming up very quickly is how do we find the patients. The patients uh, in the old approach were either expected to come forward and present themselves or there was active house-to-house -house search for cases. But then if you are afraid that people know that you have this disease, you will hide even in such a case. We started with a marketing approach with the sense of leprosy can be cured. It was very successful in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka was the first uh, country and it was later on repeated in many other countries. So we changed in a way the approach of how the disease is perceived and how you find the patients. Leprosy is a huge opportunity for corporate philanthropy as Novartis is doing. This is a great example of a tragic disease in which Novartis has a cure. And we choose to distribute it free of cost and organize the right stakeholders to ensure that we get that product to those patients. In the early 1980s, uh, the statistics on leprosy were around 10 million and the fear was that there would be up to 15 million leprosy patients. Today we have the disease that worldwide only about 250,000 people are suffering of. So uh, it has been a fantastic success. I think that it's one of the greatest success stories in the history of public health. But and when you take a disease down to the level where there are fewer and fewer cases, it gets harder and harder to identify those cases. Very often, the last mile is the most difficult.
but I am very confident that we can uh, eradicate leprosy from the face of the earth. It might take five years, it might take ten years, but it's feasible and it will be done. What we see in common in all of these cases is that the individual becomes inspired. Any number of inner pathways leads them to that awareness, that awakening. And connecting that awakening to action then leads to culture change in an organization. If businesses can operate out of love and forgiveness and compassion, they can truly change the world and they can truly make a difference that political system, economic system or the educational system cannot make. The wise corporations are the ones that are leveraging not only their dedicated business development and sales people, but actually their entire ecosystem to fall in love with who they are. There's almost a billion illiterate people on the planet today, one-seventh of the world's population. Every single study on illiteracy directly links it to problems of women's health, environmental degradation, poverty, the list goes on and on and on. We felt that the key to breaking the cycle of poverty really starts with being literate. And we have decided to create a for-profit business that was fundamentally going to change people's lives, including our own. We put a for-profit company together, collected millions of books from a variety of different sources, sold them on the internet. We've now become the third largest online seller of used books in the world. In doing this, we created a triple bottom line company. We created a organization here that cares much more than just the single threaded focus on profit. And every time a book sells, we take a percentage of the sale price, not the profit, the actual sales price, and it funds hundreds of literacy organizations around the world. But more importantly than that, we've made a difference in the lives of hundreds of thousands of people all over the world who never had a book, never had somebody read to them, never had an opportunity to become literate. But at the end of the day, this really comes down to how we're making a difference in the life of a child, an adult, who's never been able to read. Whether it's on the streets of Los Angeles or in Africa, Better World Books is there. Federal Books is providing a means of hope and inspiration, one book at a time, one child at a time. Our true nature is love. By going inside, we connect to love and become moved to serve. Businesses that serve actually have tremendous benefits. They strengthen their brands, and they become employers of choice. And in today's connected world, the public knows whether you're walking your talk. There's already a lot of distrust of business. Um, after the most recent economic crisis, even more distrust of business. I believe that um, it has to start at the top. And there are CEOs who want, they want to work for a company. They want to run a company that's doing good. You know, they personally, I mean, they're young CEOs, right, who also have the same kind of, um, they've grown up with the same kind of sensitivity and commitment to making a difference. And we want to make a difference. We have a long way to go, but I think all of that together can, can bring about some changes.
I have a home in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. And there's a path that goes all the way around the lake. And I wanted the path by my property to be very special. I started out as a waitress. I was a single mom, no education, but I had core beliefs of love and forgiveness and service. I eventually went on to open up my own company. Little did I know at that time that those three basic principles that I learned as a waitress would make my company, New Age Transportation, explode with great profits, tremendous customers. Through the good fortune of what has come through my company, we have been able to do so many wonderful things. We started the Expect a Miracle Foundation helping thousands of children of single parents. We've been able to help people of Katrina. We've been able to help the soldiers in Iraq. The Believe Project, this is what happened. I was at a school, I was at my granddaughter's school, and there was a woman in front of me as we were waiting in line who was telling this complete stranger that her daughter had died. And she now had her granddaughter to raise. And meanwhile, here's my granddaughter. She's coming up, Grandma, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. And so I said, all right, take, just get three things. Well, now her granddaughter came. And she said, Grandma, I think I've got enough for the $15. I've got a pen, I've got this, I've got that. And I wanted so badly to say, let me buy that for you. Let me do it. And I didn't have the courage. So it hit me, wow, we need to start this project. And we called it the Believe Project. So we put $100 in an envelope with all these motivational cards. So when you're in a situation like that, where you see, I really want to help, but I don't have the courage, you could certainly give them the envelope. Because I believe the more you give, the more you're going to get. When I bought this home and I put inspirational messages on a fence, I had no idea that people were going to show up and leave a piece of themselves here on this path. Ring that bell. Miracles do happen. Miracles can happen to anybody. As John Fetzer once said, love is the core energy that rules everything. Love is the one ingredient that holds us all together. It's not rocket science. We all know at the end of the day what's the right thing to do. It has not to do with we all have to become uh, monks uh, or holy people. No, we just have to do what we think ought to be done if we mean well. But it's the basic, the basic conviction, maybe value, that those who have broader shoulders should carry more. Those who have the skills, those who have the knowledge, those who have the resources have an ethical duty. There is an African saying that uh, if a thousand small people in a thousand small places would change a thousand small things, it would change the face of the world. And I think that's the philosophy we ought to take. Our own individual actions or non-actions might be small, might be, in, might be considered to be insignificant. If it becomes fashion, if it becomes sexy, if it becomes a trend, that will change. When a disabled youth is born in a poor family, in a village in India, this means a life of suffering and great despair. You don't have any future. You live dependent life for the rest of your life. And because you are not a wage earner to support the family, 
you are an extra mouth to feed. So in some respects, you are given a life sentence with no future at all. Meera Shanai decided to do something about it and she created Youth for Jobs for that purpose. What we do is locate disabled boys and girls in the villages. We talk to them, we talk to their parents and we actually tell them what is possible. We bring them to Hyderabad and enroll them into a database of unemployed youth. This group of people are the most disadvantaged of the disadvantaged. The most vulnerable among the poor. And yet, they have abilities. We train them and we give them jobs. We ask companies to hire our youth, not out of pity, but because it makes business sense. Parents cannot believe that their disabled boy and girl, whom they thought was useless, can actually get a quality job. These are very good employees. They work harder, productivity is greater, and attrition is also less. What Meera Shanai is doing is coming out of her heart, out of her commitment, to not let the suffering that she saw to spread. In her own way, she is manifesting love. So it's actually a win-win for all. A win-win for the youth, because it means he's no longer languishing at the village unemployed. A win-win for the company, because they get a loyal, dedicated workforce. And for the family, because the youth is now sending back a part of his savings home. It's a win-win for us, because we are doing work which we believe in, and work which transforms suffering into great joy. If you just look at society, you see it's changing. You know, in the past, society was quite happy for business to be the productive base of, of our society. But society is now saying, no, business is so important in our society that we've got to have them take on a broader role. We've got to have them start paying attention to what it is we want. When we talk about social responsibility, society will tell you what society wants. The key is you've got to listen. There is a transformative power when you really go to love and forgiveness as being important aspects of who you are as a person and as a business. And the business community, the business professions, we've got the resources and the ability to be able to make a difference. And there are clearly people all over the world who care, you know, and they always have. I mean, this isn't anything new, but they haven't always been able to bring that to the workplace, and they haven't always been given the freedom to exercise that as part of their business. I see people inside corporations who are driving this. You know, maybe often it's the CEO, but often it's different, you know, at different management levels. People inside co corporations who feel like the company can do better and who under who believe that the company can be successful while it is also responsible to the environment, to its employees, to communities. And so there's definitely a shift taking place. If you look for the financial perspective only, you will not do a lot of things for the planet and the people that are the right things to do despite the fact that they cost money and do not bring money in the short term. This is why this triple bottom line is so important. It's profit, planet, and people. It's not profit, profit, and profit. 
And what that means at the end of the day is that you have to achieve a profit, that that's not at question. The question is, what were the means with which you achieved the profit? In some respects, businesses are recognizing, focusing on their own interest, their own profitability, leaving the society behind does not work. Focusing on becoming smarter and smarter with the products and solutions is not going to get you anywhere. At some level, you have to dial down the smartness, you have to become wise. What society is demanding of businesses is that they engage people, not just their hands, not just their heads, but also the heart and spirit of who we are have to be engaged. What society is saying is, love me and mine, and engage me and mine. I want you to reflect me because underneath all of this is love and forgiveness. When I think of it, there is no more powerful force in the world that has the potential to do good than business. Business creates the wealth of the world. Can you imagine what would happen if, if all of business will respond to this call of love from society. If all of business would take this on, can you imagine how we could change the world?